I recently uploaded the first video based on this voxel project I've been working on. Go watch that if you haven't already. And in that, I briefly mentioned a colour changing shader that I made to give all the models a unique look to them. And a few people were interested in seeing how I achieved this result. So today I'm going to break it down in a lot more detail to hopefully help you out in understanding how it works and show you how it can be expanded for a multitude of use cases. So let's get right into it. So as you can see here with these characters, they all have unique colours for their skin, facial hair and clothing. But they all actually use the exact same texture and if I stop the game, you can see how they actually look. All the models are made up of mostly red, green and blue and these colours are what the shader looks for to replace. So let's just get started with the shader. Create a new shader graph under URP and lit shader graph and then open the graph up. You'll see the vertex and fragment nodes and not a lot else. The first step is to get the texture into the shader. So you add a texture 2D to the inputs on the left hand side. Right clicking on that texture gives you the option to set it as the main texture. So just press that and that's all done. We'll then need to sample the texture in the shader using the sample texture 2D node. Right click, add it to the graph and drag the texture to the left hand side of the node and connect them up. Now using the replace color node, going to connect that RGBA output from the sample to the RGB input in the node. Now these are technically different as it's a vector 4 into a vector 3 but shader graph deals with all that so you don't have to worry, it's just the alpha channel that's missing. So if you need the alpha you can split this and break it off, otherwise just ignore it. The replace color node has 4 more inputs, the color it's looking for the colour that it will replace it with, the range which refers to the accuracy of the colour it's replacing, uh, with a higher number being a wider range of the target colour, and the fuzziness which will soften the edges around the replace colour to blend it with the colours around them. For this low resolution texture style though that I'm showing off now, both these values will be left at zero. In this example, all of my models contain a pure red colour, so I'm going to set that target colour to 25500, which is pure red. To store and use the colour that it will be replaced with, add a colour field to the parameters in the graph inspector, call it what you like, and drag it to the to field on the replace node. Now connect the output of the replace colour node to the base colour of the fragment node and the basic version of the shader is already done. The shader will replace any pure red on a texture with a colour of your choice. It's that simple. And now all we need to do is create a new material. So I'm going to right click here, go to new material. I'm going to call this color test and set the material type to shader graph color. With the texture set to the dwarfs and a replacement color set, say orange, the red color is now replaced. With this basic shader created now, a single color can be replaced by a predefined color, but this can go even further by controlling this with code. Create a new class and call it something sensible like color swap. For this demo, I'm going to use a gradient to randomly select a colour. So I'm going to add this private field at the top and serialise it so I can see this in the editor. Then I'm going to write a function here called setColor that simply cycles through every mesh render in the children of the object and by using material.setColor you can evaluate the gradient and apply it to the colour we used in the shader graph. The name of the colour will be the value in the graph inspector labelled as reference. In my case, underscore primary. And now, adding this class to the dwarf, setting up the gradient and pressing play will result in the beard being set to a random colour from the gradient. And that is working perfectly. You can see every time I cycle the game, the beard is given a new colour. Now that is looking great, we can simply expand it with more of the same by adding a new replace node in colour and do the exact same. In my project, all the models have three different parts that can change colour using red, green and blue. But you can do this with as many colours as you like. Back in the shader graph, I'm going to simply copy and paste the replace colour node to have three stages to replace the red, green and blue. The setup is exactly the same, add a colour field on the left, connect it to the replace colour and pass the output to the next node. Easy as that. And then in the code, just add the two new colours, same as before, and the models now have three parts that can be changed easily in the editor. The final thing I'm going to add to the shader today is a noise feature to give these characters a little bit of extra detail because at the moment they look very flat. After the three colour swaps, I'm going to add another sample texture 2D, this time adding a noise texture to it, and then connecting these together with the multiply node. This will combine the texture with the noise, creating a nice output to go to the fragment colour. 
The noise texture is just a basic static one I made in paint, but you can apply any pattern or texture to this point to give the models more detail. And then that is the shader complete for now. If I start the game up, you can see how it looks with all the characters now together. And they are looking amazing. The color shader is so useful to create a variety of characters easily. And it's very simple to reproduce and expand upon. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and hopefully you can find a use for this simple system. But that is going to do it for now. Thank you very much for watching. Leave a like and comment down below with your thoughts on this. And I will see you in the next one. Cheers.